Alrighty guys, uh, I've been working on this uh, 500 for pretty much the better, off and on for the better part of the day. Uh, I can't, I can't go in and just work on it all the way through. Uh, you know, I got to take care of Dad, so it's just, you know, I work on it when I can. But I really wanted to push this thing through and get it done today, which I should be able to. Don't know if I'll be able to get test cuts in today because I still got to put it together uh, plus I've been taking time to make you guys videos um, he did not want an exotic muffler mod on this so I didn't go crazy on the exhaust port on this but the porting's done I got to modify this piece uh, yet to get more airflow through it and I do got to modify the the muffler but uh, I'll uh, get to that after I get the saw back together um, stock uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if this chart helps you guys or not let's see here I can set that up I don't know if you guys can well that light completely well oh, maybe if I get the camera on it yeah it looks like you guys can read it um, the, I didn't get a stock squish reading, wasn't worried about it because I knew I was modifying things. But the numbers I got on this for stock numbers was 105, uh, 120, 125 on the transfers, and it had 85 uh, on the intake stock, and that was with a, with a base gasket. After machine work, I was at uh, 25 squish, 110 on the exhaust, 125, 130 on the transfers, and I was 90 on the intake. So just without touching a grinder to it, with just machine work I was able to move them ports all that way with just machine work after machine work this is machine work and porting I left it to 25 squish I moved it to 102 and the, I wanted to try a different that's something in my mouth I wanted to try a different uh, build but he's got my 102 roof 500 and loves it so I wanted to stick with something I think he would he would love so I stayed with 102 roof on this gave it 120 transfers and uh, left the intake at 90 and yes this is short blowdown but once again I've explained this to people front fed you know any saw that has compromised transfers front fed falls in that category they're compromised uh, stratified saws compromise they seem to do favor shorter blowdown so I, I'm not going to get into this to this argument but uh, y you know but on the other hand I remember right my 462 has got medium blowdown and it runs really good too but uh, I know I had moderately short blowdown than the one that he got from me so I wanted to stick with a formula that I knew he knew he would like and then I'll show you guys I took 45 for those that want to know I use Dino Joe's uh, chamber cutter and then I, I took 40 out with that and then put 120 grit sandpaper on a sanding apparatus and uh, cleaned up the the thing so if you guys that are using you know Dino Joe's chamber cutter if you want your chambers to look like that you got to build a sanding apparatus and then go in there and turn it real slow because you do not want to get your sand paper crumbs up in, in between there but you turn it real slow that was with some that's 120 grit finish uh, in there I lunged the intake on the 500s I call them like a squished transformer looking face because uh, you know it's squished with the wide I don't know bat wings or whatever the heck you want to call it uh, the, the reason that is is I have to get the charge around the some call this a case stuffer or whatever but uh, this as it's coming down I'm thinking this is directing a hoof of air up underneath to lubricate the cool and lubricate the piston um, but these steep intake numbers it does not seem to allow even though uh, I typically say you can this has a big intake port uh, but I typically say you can get away with uh, 
large intake numbers with small ports but uh, this is the reason the reason why same with the 461 uh, I think the 661 has got something like that and I think my 462 had something something like that if I remember right it's been a while but uh, that, that uh, stops the blowback for for whatever for whatever reason that I've noticed anyway but uh, here's a front front view how I tunneled it there is the uppers I did fire both uppers at the same time on this one I textured inside here you really can't do much in here and the reason I call these a compromised transfer that area right there is feeding them two transfers so you need longer transfer duration to get the same amount of fuel in that I would as if uh, I was running in a non-compromised uh, transfer which I don't know as if I've got one that I can well this is a, some sort of Husqvarna one here but you can see that's got twice the transfer area on one you know one side so the this has the same amount of transfer area as both sides do that's why I call these compromised because it the, the they're working off from velocity uh, not flow so if you don't have if you don't have the flow you need to start it sooner to fill the same void as if you had flow you know where, where it moved larger at a slower speed so uh, and then here's here's the exhaust I did I did widen widen it let me see if I can get you guys a I lost my good flashlight. I don't know what I what I did with it. I did widen the in, inside of it, but uh, on my other ones, I've took these out and, and made them bigger. But it seems how I'm not doing that with the exhaust. I couldn't see couldn't see the point. These Mars, these little. You can't feel them at all, but it's just where I've had flashlights down inside the port while I was while I was working on it. But uh, yeah, so it's I like showing you guys this stuff. Hopefully, it helps you guys out. And I get complimented all the time saying how clean my my work uh, looks. You guys can achieve work just like this, if not better. Just take your time. Uh, I'm not in a rush when I when I do this. If it takes me four hours to grind them ports, it's four hours to grind them ports. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm not going to sacrifice my quality or, uh, you know, my workmanship. I'm just trying to pump a saw. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, it takes me four hours, six hours. I, I don't care. Like, like I polish, you know, I polish my exhaust ports. Some people don't. That's totally up to your guys' preference. I prefer to polish it. Um, it's an extra 15 minutes, but who, I, I don't care. I'm not a production porter. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. But, uh, I'm, so once again, this is 102, 120, 90, uh, I'm going to work on, i got to get this thing cleaned up, uh, a couple other parts uh, cleaned back up, and I want to get this thing uh, put back together tonight. Uh, so hopefully hopefully that helps you guys out, uh, anybody that's doing a 500, uh, we'll see how this one runs. Um, it's built slightly different than the other two that I've done, but this is more everyday use work saw uh, or oriented. He didn't want a cookie cutter so um that's what i'm trying to deliver for him so but uh and you know i know some people like the fact that i machine some people don't like the fact that i machine they, they say i'm over machining stuff that's that's your guys's preference i'm, I'm not going to tell you guys how to build a saw I, i'm just going to build saws the way i want to build them um i particularly prefer uh machine work but there is saws that I don't do machine work on. 2511 is one of them. You can port that saw and get tremendous gains out of it without doing a bunch of fiddling around. 
I did a bunch of fiddling around with one and didn't really see any better gains out of it than I did with, without the, the you know machine work. So it's builder's choice. I mean, you guys have to make that judgment call yourself. I particularly like machine work. Uh, I like the challenge of it. Um, I like scratching my head on things. Um, but I, I can tell you from my experiences, if you are raising your exhaust and you are not bringing the compression back from what you took every from from my testing almost every degree guys takes away about 10 pounds of uh, compression so if you started out with a saw that had 150 pounds of compression and you raised the exhaust three degrees you just lost 30 pounds of compression uh, and that's that's hurting the the physical pulling power of the of the saw. Yeah, it might not affect top RPM much, but it it is physically affecting how that saw will pull through the wood. Um, like I had to raise the exhaust a mile on this after after the machine work, you know. Eight nine eight nine. And what eight I had to raise that exhaust eight eight degrees but it, the saw is going to be fine because I've gotten it back by shrinking the chamber so I, I you know I put the compression uh, back into it so th that's just something to, to think about you know um, if you guys are building saws and all you're doing is base gasket delete only well some saws if it's if it's at like hundred and ten you can bring it to 105 and, and then do a base gasket to lead if, there, if there's room for allow it and that would be okay. But typically if, if if you're already at 105 and all you do is drop the base gasket, I'd say bring it back to, to one, you know, the thickness, you know, only raise it the thickness of your gasket because if you're not doing machine work, um, that's a safe zone. It'll keep you from uh, building, a, building a lackluster saw. So, um, but even if you guys are into porting and stuff and don't have the abilities to do the machine work, you can still build really good saws without machine work. You just have to go different routes of, of doing it. You can't get crazy with your numbers. You know, there's, you know, all this is is give and take. I'm taking it from one place, moving it to another. Um, and you got to find that that fine fine balance it's you know and I typically like to, to try to have moderate speed with moderate torque um, that way the saw has the best of both worlds um, you know because you can gear them where they're a tractor and they'll pull anything but they're just doing it at 8,000 rpm and then you can gear them where they wind to the moon but they won't pull long bar worth of snot so there's just just give or take but uh i wanted to show that i guess i'll show that cylinder uh one more time and you guys can achieve this work i get people that send me pictures and videos all the time of of the, you know how i've watched their port work progress uh throughout like the span of a year or whatever and it's it's really really cool to see so once again there's the scrunched up transformer looking shape whatever bat wing uh it kind of looks like a cat that way a cat that way i guess there's the the upper work the lower work there is the exhaust and 25 102 120 90. so i'm gonna call this a vid here so i can get crack lacking on it um you guys take it easy uh, and enjoy your day